Hi, Holly. Holly's chilling out. Actually warming up. It cooled down a little bit this week, and we finally had rain after a long dry spell. Just give you a little garden update today. This won't be a long video, but kind of walk through some of what's emerged since the last time we were together. One fun thing is that I have little Johnny Jump Ups. These are little violas that I had seeded and they really hadn't germinated very quickly. And so I sowed some radishes among them just to get a crop of something. And now the Jump Ups have come. <laughs> My beets are doing well. In fact, I have a few that are um, getting ready to harvest and they've benefited from some rain lately. And this is a yellow pear tomato um, that's taking off nicely. Blueberries are still doing great. Haven't had any pest issues. Uh, and the blueberries out front and the raspberries and strawberries in the back are all producing. And a look over here on the other the other top hat blueberry and I see a couple of fun things one is this is a volunteer tomato from last year <laughs> that sprouted up next to the blueberry plant and the other thing is that I actually have some color on a couple of these blueberries so we're finally in the season of getting to the harvest this is my squash and cucumber some cucamelons are in here under here I'm training these up the this little trellis come out here and help them find their way north this is a mystery cucumber I had two seeded there was a lemon cucumber and a white cucumber and I planted both of them in this patch but I didn't mark which was which and only one survived the transplant process so that's okay, I'll get some surprise cucumbers. And then the rest of these are uh, zucchini squash. And these I didn't plant from seed, but a friend, a friend of a friend did, and they had a couple extra plants, so I went ahead and stuck a couple seeds in here, and they're doing great. Blossoms coming. They're one of the earlier producers in my climate. My southern magnolia tree is blooming and fragrant and smells divine. I wish you had smell-o-vision so you could smell what I'm smelling here while they come alive. Another blossom. They sure make a mess though when they shed their leaves, but they smell awesome. Over here is the south-facing garden. You'll see a ton of containers and that's because uh, if you've seen any of my earlier videos, this year I had to deal with or try to overcome a significant Bermuda grass problem. So I laid newspaper, cardboard, and mulch over this whole area and planted everything above ground. And I'll probably have to do it again another year to tame this grass issue before I can finally finish solarizing this bed, amend the soil, and plant inside. So, a lot of containers. This is Swiss chard that's getting spent. It's been rained on this week. I'm letting it dry out, and then I'm going to harvest those seeds. And I have some tall um, two-year chard in the front of the house that's also going to go through the same process. In this little, well, big container, some beautiful sweet basil. Uh, these are just um, green beans. And then two indeterminate tomato varieties. This is a um, this is the only hybrid tomato plant in the whole garden. I bought it because at my plant sale I had sold all of my cherry tomatoes that I had started from seed, but I really wanted one cherry tomato plant, <laughs> so I went to the store and bought this super sweet 100 hybrid. And so that's the plant on the left. The plant on the right is one that I did start from seed. I think it's a Tigarella, but I'm not 100% sure. And that's what you'll hear as a general theme for this year's garden is 
peppers and tomatoes along the way. Some had been prepared for plant sale and didn't sell. Others had um, germinated a little later, but they were healthy and bouncing back, so I decided to keep them. So I just started sticking peppers and tomatoes in places where they would go, and not all of them are marked, which is fine with me. It means I'll have a surprise crop of things. But every tomato and pepper plant that I seeded this year was something I wanted to have. We had a, I have a wide variety of hot peppers that I grew from seed and a good variety of tomatoes, paste tomatoes, beefsteak tomatoes, salad tomatoes, and that one cherry tomato. This is a, we have two more kohlrabi growing left to harvest. That one and this one. This one is taking a little longer to bulb up, so it'll be another week or two. This one will be ready next week. But then what's growing in the bed underneath them are some other cucumbers. So as the kohlrabi come out, the cucumbers and cucamelons will get their sunshine. And I'll grow those up a teepee trellis like I did last year. So lots of peppers, lots of tomatoes, and more cucumbers, squashes, all the warm weather crops are doing great here. This is most exciting find of my day. This is... A glacier tomato plant and I have some nearly ripe fruit which is wonderful I have a Manitoba that's this one here that's a determinate variety the glacier is a semi determinate both of those were bred for cooler climates and have a shorter growing season and then this one is an indeterminate I know that much I'm just not sure which variety it's gonna end up being but that's okay. I had some extra um, climbing triple crop, Tigarella, Shemegstu stuff, Golden Jubilee, and Pink Ponderosa. So it could be any one of those. <laughs> well, I can tell from the shape that it's, um, this might be actually uh, the Golden King of Siberia. It's beginning to take an ox heart shape. The tomatoes are that are growing in there so anyway I'll keep you posted and see what develops I'm not actually sure what I'm gonna get but it's producing fruit and that's what I want this raised bed is the one that I'm paying particular attention to the nasturtiums are going crazy they we just had a beautiful crop I need to dead, deadhead some of these and it'll just keep blooming it likes this spot I have a black beauty or excuse me, a purple beauty bell pepper there, and then a couple of habaneros here with some basil, radish, uh, lemon thyme, and some rosemary there. These are Jolly Jester marigolds. They haven't budded yet, but they're starting to form flower buds. So another week or two, we'll have some flowers blooming here. They're a taller variety of marigolds. But they have a really neat um, pattern to their petals. So I'm excited to grow those for the first time. This is a determinate tomato. This is a Rutgers tomato. So it's spreading and taking up all kinds of room. And it's going to be wonderful. Um, I staked it. I have three stakes in here holding it up. Because it's going to be a big bushy plant. But all the other tomatoes here are indeterminate. And as you can see... They're growing up a single stem and what that means is I have pruned the bottom leaves and the early sets of suckers so that the plants would produce more uh, root development and put more energy into fruit production than leaf production. So all these stems you can see are bare but then once you get up to the first fruit set what you're looking at here is an Amish paste tomato which is that oblong shape. Now that the fruits are setting, then it'll just continue up this, see if I get it into focus, single stem. And it this will just keep growing and growing. These are indeterminate varieties, so they'll grow until the frost. This one here, I'm most excited about. This was my single seed challenge tomato. The Look at the shape. You see how they're, they have ridges kind of forming like um, maybe an apple or 
eventually they'll take on the shape of a bell pepper. Those are Chemeg stew stuffed tomatoes. They have thick walls, a very little gel, very few seeds, and they're red with orange stripes. And they're just a beautiful tomato for grilling, roasting, broiling, um, anything where you want your tomato to hold its shape and substance and just have a meaty texture to it. So that was my uh, single seed challenge. If you want to know more about the single seed challenge, I'll put a link to Scott Head's, I'm not sure if his last name is pronounced Head or Heed. Um, he's known as Black Gumbo. And I'll put a link to his single seed challenge video in the description so you can learn more about that. These under the tomatoes are cucamelons. I grew several cucamelons this year, partly because I didn't get a good crop last year and so I wanted to hedge my bets and partly because I had a couple of seed companies whose seeds I wanted to try to see um, if the re one of the reasons I had a bad year last year might have been a, a bad brand. So I have cucamelon seeds from I believe True Love Seeds, Seeds Now, and uh, Park Seeds. It's planted in different places. More tomatoes growing back here. And then under here, they're not getting a lot of direct sun yet, but they will. I put some extra onions because I had seeded onions. They had done a wonderful job growing in the jugs this year as part of the winter sowing method. And I wanted to give them some space to grow. I've never grown onions from seed before, and I love the winter sown method for that. So I'll definitely be winter sowing onion seeds in the future. But that bed is coming along very nicely. Behind me on the other end of the cattle panel, some calendula. These are finally like really, really popping. Dead hit this one here. That's a beautiful like apricot color. This one's a bright yellow. Um, they're beautiful dark orange before they bloom and then they've got this lighter center come out. And then over here, other than a nasturtium, these are um, Minnesota midget cantaloupes and a tigger melon growing in there. I have one more, this is a Another indeterminate variety of the tomato, this is a pink ponderosa. And those are a beautiful and large beefsteak tomato. And then back here, some lima beans. They've taken some pest pressure and I put like six seeds out and I only see three germinated. So I'm gonna plant three more. Those are a bush variety. They only grow two or three feet. They stay pretty compact. And then here's that celery. Remember in a previous video I had said I actually thought that the celery seed was probably old and and uh, that's why I hadn't germinated. It's doing wonderfully. I've already harvested some of the leaves and stems to put in a soup this week. Then I have some other onions. Just again looking for places where I can poke onions and get bulbing onions. I think these are either Walla Walla or Red Burgundy because I seeded three varieties and those were the two that I was still looking for space for. Over here behind the kitchen in the backyard, the raspberries are finally forming. I've already harvested a few handfuls, but these will really ripen up in the next week or two and then I'll have a good crop of fresh raspberries. Is that one ready yet? Let me give it one more day. I'll enjoy that one tomorrow if the birds don't beat me to it. I don't have these covered at the moment because I really haven't had a lot of bird issues. And we have birds on the property, but they have bird feeders and the bird bath is full. So they haven't been bothering the plants too much. Here are a few that are ripe. This one here is ready to pick. There we go. Who doesn't love fresh red raspberries? Best time of year. Mm -mm -mm. Very good. Told you since I couldn't grow much in ground this year, I had to rely more on containers. So I have peppers growing there. These I wintered over. 
I'm not actually sure what varieties these are. One of them is going to be a jalapeno and they might both be jalapeno or one of them might be a sweet bell pepper. Not sure yet. Over here in these containers, more peppers, herbs, uh, some late season cilantro and another pepper plant. These are um, tiny Tim tomatoes, so they'll only grow 18 inches, between 18 inches and two feet, and they'll be a compact bushing variety with small cherry tomatoes on it. There are three tiny tomatoes in, tiny Tim tomatoes and some thyme in that pot. And in this pot, there's another tiny Tim plus some cilantro and uh, uh, pineapple sage. And then more tomatoes. These were all suckers from the tomatoes out front that I showed you. And I stuck them in water for, for about eight days, nine days until they developed some new roots. And then I potted them up so I'd have more tomatoes. I don't know if you knew that you could do that, but those suckers are fruit producing branches that will also develop roots. So you can propagate tomatoes very easily um, when you're pruning. That works for indeterminate varieties of tomatoes. This is my carrot bucket. You can see it's not nearly as full as it was because I've harvested a bunch. The rest are in here growing to fuller size. This one had um, a rainbow carrot mix, the Long Rouge Sang carrots from Baker Creek, and red cord Chantenay carrots. Just a handful of each. So they're doing great. Another week or two, I'll harvest those and then um, amend the soil and plant a new bucket. A bucket is a great way to grow carrots because you've already cleared the soil and nothing is in there to interrupt the stems of the carrots from developing true and straight. They won't run into debris. They won't be bumping into rocks. So, and they, they don't have weed pressure and just in general, you can keep an eye on the pest pressure better. So those carrots have done really well for me this year. This is a little miniature herb garden in a grow bag. The lemon balm, as you can see, is really bushing out. Um, lemon balm, like any kind of mint plant, will take over everything. That includes catnip. So I love it, but I grow it in containers. I never put it in ground because it'll go crazy. This is my broadleaf sage. I grew this from seed and the buds are here and the bees love it. Some bunching onions, scallions that are ready to be harvested. And this is a globe basil. So it tastes just like a normal sweet basil. It's a Greek variety, but this will grow a much bushier version. And then this is another pepper plant that I wintered over. This is a purple chili. And it's taking its time kind of getting started, but you can see there's um, growth on the stem at the leaf nodes so it'll pop back I may not get a full harvest from it but I'll get some this is fun these were these were um, perennial plants that I needed to dig up and find a new home for and my mom said she'd take them to her property which has only just been excavated and so now we can finally plant into it but in the meantime all the lilies we dug up are starting to bloom inside a plastic milk crate. <laughs> How cool is that? You give plants what they need and they'll grow anywhere. These are the only two eggplants I have in the garden this year. And this one had a beautiful bloom developing on it. And then we got heavy, heavy thunderstorms the other day and the bloom fell off. It got knocked off in the storm. This is some cinnamon basil. Tastes a lot like Thai basil. Has that cinnamon or anise flavor. This is the bed I'm excited about. I have okra and beans growing here in the front with a couple of pepper plants. Some watermelon sprouting up near the trellis here um, to the right of this, the right and the left of the two posts closest to us. And then back here is corn among the corn are some more bean plants that have been planted. And then in the back, some squash plant. This is a, a Table Queen acorn squash. The seeds came from 
Gary Polarchik over at the Rusted Garden Homestead. And then this plant is a sugar pie, sugar pie pumpkin, which is a smaller pumpkin variety. I didn't want big pumpkins. I just don't have room for them. But I did want one pumpkin plant. And then this is a purple potato that I'm growing in a five gallon bucket. I love to grow potatoes in buckets. And this particular variety will flower and it have beautiful purple blooms. And then once it's done blooming, you'll, I'll see that the leaves begin to discolor and turn a little yellow. And then eventually they'll start to droop. And while they're yellow and drooping and the buds have come and gone, that'll be my cue that the potatoes are ready to harvest. So still more time to wait, but it's a beautiful plant in the meantime. The last thing I'll show you is a couple of the flowers that have been coming up that are really exciting for me. Over here in the hedgerow, I had planted some cosmos. I have a, I have a seashell variety and a candy stripe variety growing here. Some black-eyed Susans are coming up nicely. Um, little baby sergeant crab apple growing in that spot to fill in where an, another tree had come out, and some PG pink hydrangeas in this area where an, a different tree had come out and they're growing really well. So that's exciting. My neighbor gave me some rose campion. Uh, rose campion will spread, but it's a wonderful filler flower and it has these brilliant blooms and silvery leaves. My grandmother grew this in her garden and it was her favorite flower and I love it. So when I saw it coming up at my neighbor's house, I asked her if I could have one plant and she gave me three and this will spread and so I'll have more which is what I want here in this area this is kind of a wild area and I'd like to keep it that way but I want to add pops of color here and there the coleus are doing great these were all from seed three different varieties three different color schemes my Godzilla fern which I love is doing well my hydrangea is just beginning to form its first early buds and more coming Let's see if you can see those that's exciting i amend the hydrangeas and azaleas with holly tone acidifier um, about three quarters of a cup uh, scratched into the surface of the soil around the base in the spring uh, before they really start to come up and in the fall when they die back and I cut them back and that helps them to maintain their blue color when they come up and um, gives them the lower pH that they prefer. Easter lilies are forming flower heads. They'll be opening soon. Some of these will grow eight feet tall and smell gorgeous and be beautiful. These are my Sweet William Double Tall Mix. These were grown from seed in jugs. Um, they're doing fine. They'll bloom uh, later in the summer. Over here I have some Jewel Mix Nasturtium. Followed by some uh, more of the Jolly Jester Marigold. And then there's one of those pretty seashell cosmos. They call them the seashell variety because the petals are um, tubular shaped like a sea like some forms of seashells the red noodle beans are starting to form so they're getting big enough they'll begin um, being trained up the teepee here I've already harvested some peas off of this little marvel pea plant I have more to pick next week when they get a little fatter, because I like them as English peas. The gomfrina that had taken so long to get started is doing great. That's here, I cannot wait for these to grow. These are globe amaranth is the other name. And they'll grow a long straight stem and have a big red poofy flower on top. Hollyhocks are doing great. The bush beans, lettuce, and herbs in my 
stackable planter doing well. I'm still harvesting this lettuce. Look at that globe, globe basil. That's Greek basil. Look at how it just bushes out. It fills the whole space. And these are um, a combination of provider bush beans and gold rush bush beans. Over here, more uh, columbine. Back here, and a rudbeckia plant. Pawpaw trees are doing very well. Three of those. They're just babies this year. This is their first year growing, so they're fine in this planter. Eventually, they'll move on to my mom's property. Look at all the wild strawberries I have growing here. That's one of the many ground covers that compete for space in this area. This is a cherry bush that my neighbor has given my mom. So I'm just letting it get established here until her property's ready to receive it and then we'll dig it up and transplant it. Very excited about these are the um, Canterbury Bells. This one. Now that we've had all the rain recently, the weeds are going crazy. But some Black Eyed Susans. I wanted some perennials in here. There's Echinacea hiding in here as well. My flower wall is coming along. A little wild looking. The knee-high sweet peas, that's the pinks and purples you see growing. They didn't really climb the trellis. They just kind of grew up around things. But the borage is doing well. The nasturtium is loving life here at this spot. And the red hot pokers are up. That's a red hot poker. Those are cool flowers. They have a very short bloom life though, and with the storms we've had recently, they kind of got beat up pretty early in their blooming phase. The rest of the year, it'll just be ornamental grass. Before I we go, I just wanted to show you the tops of this chard. Every single one of those little buds will develop seed, clusters of seed. So this plant right here that I grew from seed a year ago, and this is its second growing year, will yield enough Swiss chard seeds, not only for me to have for the rest of my life, <laughs> basically. If I never harvested another seed, there'd be plenty here to grow, plenty to sell and share. Just a very prolific plant. And that we've been eating off of it nonstop. So you can see how it's kind of stripped down in some places because I've put it in soups, I've put it in stir fries. What a great, versatile vegetable. Mild flavor kind of takes on the flavor of whatever you're cooking with, um, absorbs all the flavors of the herbs and spices, and then develops these really prolific seed heads. So when we get into later in the growing season, I'll do several seed saving videos to show you how I'm harvesting seeds because I do save seed in order to save money. And uh, there are some great ways to do that. So anyway, I hope your gardening is growing well. I hope that you're being blessed wherever you are and seeing a wonderful, productive uh, planting season. I'll leave you with a little Johnny Jump up there. Isn't that a beautiful little flower? It's teeny tiny, but it has a lot of character. I'll grow more of these next year. There's another one hiding in under this radish. And one more here. <laughs> little violas. I'm learning a lot. I'm sharing it here and I hope you'll come grow with me. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you next time.